I just said that. Welcome, friends. Thank you for those of you that have been um, praying for this to get going. Uh, Nathan was having difficulty getting a signal where he's at. So we got him on. Hallelujah. <laughs> so um, today, my guest is Nathan French, and he has a heart for evangelism, discipleship, and healing that are nurtured through a powerful prophetic gifting. He is an international revivalist with a heart and passion to bring the movement of the Holy Spirit wherever he goes. Hallelujah. And Nathan also has a church called the Rock Revival Center. So welcome to the show, Nathan. <laughs> Amen. Hello, everybody. Hello, Cheryl. Looks like you're, uh, you're outside in the beautiful uh, Northwest somewhere. So that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of off grid. We got some. You, you see some. Uh, looks like ravens or uh, circle in a lake down below. And uh, this just um, beautiful mountainous area. I just came out of the thick woods. I was in the thick woods to wow. come down where I could find a signal. Wow. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about your background for those that don't know you. Sure. I, well, I grew up in the CMA. My dad was a pastor for the Christian Missionary Alliance, and I. Um, I didn't see miracles. I didn't see signs or wonders that follow those who believe. Um, but, you know, I learned scripture. I just didn't know how to hear the God of the Bible. And so I kind of fell away. I just felt like I knew about God, but I didn't know that I didn't know God. And so I started to pursue the things of the world, you know, like I have parties and, you know, sex and drugs and all this stuff you do when you, when you don't know God. And and I thought, well, I'm going to find real happiness doing whatever I want. So anyway, I chased uh, the world and I found myself really miserable after a couple of years of just partying hard and doing everything wrong on purpose. I was very rebellious. And um, anyway, God stepped in at my last breath, gave me new breath. I was hooked up to my exhaust pipe. I tried to end my life. A suicide attempt. I was 23. Yeah. So God stepped in and saved me. He said, now that you're broken, I can use you but will you live for me? And I began to pursue a life after the Lord. And um, he started to speak to me. I started hearing his voice and uh, he started teaching me how to operate in the miraculous and how to pray with authority from knowing who I am in him. And uh, it really changed my life. So about 10 years ago, I, I think it was about 10 years ago, the Lord told me to sell everything and move to Washington. I was from Washington originally, but uh, we lived in Arizona and I had a corporate job. I was an executive. I worked for the Weston Hotel Company uh, and uh, and I traveled all over the world and I was doing really well. They offered me a job, a promotion that I had wanted for about four or five years. And uh, anyway, God told me to say no. <laughs> I said I said goodbye to my very lucrative career to literally go broke for Jesus. We sold everything we own and gave away a whole bunch of stuff. And we moved to Washington. And I said, what in the world have I done? I just gave up half a million dollars a year, whatever it was. And I said, you know, this is crazy. Now I'm just trying to, you know, go out and be a, a, a you know, just, I was a worship leader. I was traveling as a worship leader. Wow. And uh, God started to speak to me. He told me, can I want you to plant a church? I said, well, I laughed. I didn't know anything about that. And he said, well, you hear my voice and you're willing to do what I say. And so I need you to, uh, I need you to uh, plant a church. I want a church for the churches. And I thought, well, what, what's wrong with the church? You know? And he said, well, the church is sick and it needs healing. And I want the church abroad to be healed by the church that I build through you. And so I thought, well, okay, I didn't really know what that meant, but he told me to gather some men. And, and so I gathered a dozen guys and I said, Hey man, God gave me a vision and it puts on my heart to build um, a church for churches. It's an equipping center. Uh, he gave me Ephesians four to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry until we come to the maturity of the faith. And so I started learning about unity and what it takes to be kingdom minded and not be just religious. Right. And not just to go through the motions, you know, but to actually engage God in, in the moment and to live free in faith. And so anyway, it's been an amazing journey. Wow. Praise God. Um, so how long ha would you say you've been in ministry now? Um, I, I think it's been 10 years. I'm pretty sure it's been 10 years. I, uh, yeah, I remember um, when Todd White came, he was just starting out in ministry 
So it might have been 11 years. Um, but when Todd White came to this little church in my town, Port Orchard, um, I felt like I was supposed to go. And I heard about this dude that was an atheist, you know, a drug addict, you know, all this stuff. And how he got born again and just this radical conversion started moving in, in healings and stuff. And I, I thought, well, this would be interesting. You know, maybe, maybe I maybe I need to go. And I was hungry. I was hungry because I knew there was more. I knew there was more than what I'd been taught, what I'd seen. And so that hunger caused me to pursue. And so when Todd was preaching on Romans 8, uh, he said, you know, he quoted the scripture, Romans 8. He said, therefore, now there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. He set us free from the law of sin and death. What the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful men to be a sin offering that the righteous requirements of the law would be fully met in us. who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. And when I heard him speaking this, I thought, oh, my gosh. I'm not condemned. I wish I would have known this. I thought I was condemned. Like I lived under guilt and shame and condemnation and judging myself. And because I was criticizing myself, I became the judge of others instead of being gracious. Like God judges to evaluate, which is really restorative in nature. But so when we see the word judge in the Bible, he's the righteous judge. When we judge rightly, we're going to judge with the right mindset, restorative in nature. But condemnation, it brings a critical kind of spirit that is like a religious spirit that nitpicks. It's like the little foxes that nitpick or spoil the vine. And what the church really needs is to stop criticizing each other and figure out a way to come into common ground and begin to unify for the sake of the cross. Look at what I'm wearing today. I wore this just for you. Look, I like it. Yeah, I'm, wearing my, I'm in the woods and I'm wearing my CrossFit <laughs> shirt. And you know what? I feel like God's saying, I'm, I'm causing my people to be compelled with compassion and to come, come to me in the secret place so yes. that I can touch them, so yes. that I can speak to them, so that I can train them. The Holy Ghost is the best trainer uh, uh, I've ever experienced. I've had a lot of great teachers teach me things and I've picked up things here and there as I've traveled the world, but there's no teacher like the Holy Ghost. Jesus uh -huh. is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he keeps on teaching his people who will come and listen. The, the story of the 12 virgins, I think was half of them. You know, they, they didn't have oil in the lamp. You remember? And the other half did have oil. And those who didn't have oil ended up asking if they could borrow from the oil from those who had prepared. Yes. And the story really is, is a message. You can't borrow someone else's intimacy. You know, we need to get intimate ourselves. We need to spend time with Jesus. So ask questions, you know, get what I'm doing today. I'm off grid because I want to connect with God in a deeper way. I've had mountains. I know he blows. His wind will blow at strategic times when he's speaking, just like in the days of old. We just uh, celebrated at the Rock Creek Bible Center, our, uh, our, our church and equipping centers in North Tacoma, the city of Destiny in Washington. And, uh, and the Lord said, Pentecost Sunday is supposed to be every Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> so we just had an incredible, like, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It was so powerful. Uh, people laying on the floor. And, you know, that's not the goal. But certainly you can see people are getting hit by the power of God. You know, right. just shaking like bacon. They're, they're just like, oh, my gosh. People tears, weeping. People getting delivered of stuff. I mean, that's just fun. And I yeah. turned off the camera at one point because it got a little too radical at the end where people were literally just being, they were being encountered by God and encountering God and his goodness. So we had such a powerful meeting at the, uh, at, you know, where I lead, I, we lead a church called the Rock Revival Center. And it's been just a blast because it's really, it's all for us, it's all about revival. Um, we don't want to just be another church, although we are a church, but we want to see people get trained, get, get equipped, start moving in the gifts so they can bear the fruit. And uh, so we create an environment with God that is a safe place for people to practice so they can learn to get it right more often. Yes. Amen. So speaking of gifts, how does God speak to you most? What, what gifts would you say you carry and how does God speak to you most? Well, it's a good question because there's a lot of people who say, well, I've got this gift and so I don't have that one. I went to, a, I was very disappointed after visiting a church uh, for the first time. I, I had never been to this church before um, on a Sunday that I could recall. And the pastor was talking about the gifts of the spirit. And he was saying how, you know, everybody gets one and that we shouldn't presume on God 
uh, you know, to expect to have more than one. And he says, I don't prophesy because that's not my gift. And I don't, I don't pray for people and, and expect for them to get healed because that's not my gift. And, and I don't, and I don't operate in, in miracles. Like the, the, there's clearly a working of miracles gift, and a gift for healing and a gift for this. And, and he said, but I don't operate in that either. So I'm not going to presume on God and, and be ungrateful that I don't have some, I have a gift to teach. He said, and I thought, wow, that's terrible that you've got a teacher who's influencing many people and he's teaching them. You only get one of the nine gifts. And, and you know, the truth is that's false. Amen. <laughs> the truth is that the Lord distributes the gifts as he wills yes. and he would never, his nature, his character, he would never withhold a gift that you need. In other words, if he tells you, I want you to dig a ditch, he's not going to withhold the shovel. He's That's not right. going to say, you can't have that shovel. You got to call so-and-so in, in another state and, and have them bring a shovel because they've got the shovel gift. It's like, <laughs> it's silly, right? It's like, no, no, no. If, if you are supposed to do something, God will give you what you need to do Come the on. thing that he's asked you to yes. do. You got to step out and yes. believe in faith and watch how God will reward the faith. He looks for action. Uh, you know, faith without work is dead. So what we need is something that's not dead. Faith that works is something that's not broken. Something that doesn't work is broken. So God's saying that faith that I give you is, is from hearing, hearing by the word. Jesus is the word. So when Jesus speaks, he's trying to build our shield. He's trying to fill us with faith. So we're protected. Faith actually protects us. So hearing God protects us. If God says, don't go there, then going there would be unsafe. Come if on. he says, go there then going there is the only safety yeah people say well you don't want to go to the muslim nation i can't wait to go i'm going to go preach in pakistan millions of people will be safe we're already broadcasting it like oh man so many countries and hundreds of millions of people being reached with the gospel through five different networks that i i preach on different networks yeah but here's the thing like i get that god wants everybody to be saved and most of the conflicts in the world are between those filled with the spirit of God and those not yet filled, filled with the spirit of God. So everywhere I go, I say, do you, do you know Jesus? And I can tell if they say, oh yeah, kind of, or no, maybe, or, or mm, yeah, you know, you can tell if they really know Jesus, if they don't know Jesus, I want to make sure they're filled with the spirit. And if I say, what did God tell you? And they don't, oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like, cause they don't know cause they don't know God. So they need to be filled with God in order to know God. And then they got to walk with God and surrender. So it's one thing to be filled. It's another thing to be yielded. If we're filled and we're not yielded, then there again, there's a conflict between the spirit of Antichrist that's in those who have received the spirit of Christ and yielded to the spirit of Christ. And those who have not yet are going to automatically be governed by an Antichrist spirit. So we got to we got to get filled with the spirit of Christ so that the Antichrist mm -hmm. spirit cannot operate in us. And then we start flowing with the spirit of God. And, and there's it's not a divided message. What's the division in the world is between those filled and those yielded, those not yet filled and those not yet yielded. Yes. Amen. <laughs> um, and I, I agree with you. I do know that um, there are certain gifts that um, I, I move stronger in. But yeah. I, I, I agree with you that the person in front of you right now might need a gift that you don't normally flow in and Holy spirit can use you in that gift to reach that person. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you share a God encounter with us, Nathan, that you've had? Well, okay. How about this? I was up here in the mountains uh, getting some time with the Lord and, uh, and the Lord told me, make a note of everything I've ever promised you. And I thought, Whoa. Oh man, so I pulled out my journal because I always recommend people have a journal or something to write down or you can put it in your phone, but phones can, you know, break and things can be lost. So uh, I'd say get paper and pen and always be ready. In fact, if you're watching this broadcast, it's not by accident. You know, God pulled me out of the woods. I really didn't want to do the interview. I felt God wanted me to do it. I, I didn't want to do it because I'm busy trying to get off grid and here and get away from people and get away from technology. And that's why I come up here. It's, it, so it's counterproductive for me to do interviews, but at the same time, if God wants me to do it, I'm not mine. I don't want to fight God. And you're a nice lady. I could tell you're a wonderful person. So, you know, it's like God wanted to do this. So I'm excited because the Lord always has the plan. Maybe you're watching this and you're like, well, what's the point of it? Well, here's the point. If you're watching this because God wanted you to tune in right now. 
is because he wants to do something powerful in your life where you'd be touched by him, maybe by revelation or by the anointing. And all of a sudden everything changes and you go to another glory, another realm, another level, yeah. uh, you know, the Holy spirit, maybe there's something God will unlock yeah. in, the, in the simplicity of hearing and understanding his voice yes. where he can deposit and, 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 and uh, place in you divine wisdom for it, for the future, for whatever he wants to do. So, Anyway, I was up here on the mountain and I was worshiping the Lord. I was by myself. The Lord said, I want to personalize your adventure. And he led me to a ranger station to get a map. And I got a map and I said, what road should I go to, Lord? The, the Olympic National Forest is a big place. And he said, well, uh, I want you to go to road 27. And I looked at the map and it said um, NF 27 for National Forest Service Road at 27 so i went up to the end of road 27 and uh and i realized that nf is my initials and 27 is my birthday oh and so i was like i was like wow lord you personalized my adventure and we just got here and he goes yeah make a list of everything make a list of everything i've ever told you that i would do for you and uh and, and anything you can remember that i've promised you in my word. And I said, okay, Lord. And I, I remembered some things and I wrote them down, you know, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm for you. I'm with you. And I'll, you know, Emmanuel means God with us. That means he's with us. Right. And some people think they're alone and, and God hasn't left. So you're not alone. And it's amazing. So it's like, uh, I'm writing all these promises down, you know, uh, and, and as I fill the pages, you know, of what I could remember in the scripture and what he spoke to me personally, uh, then I thought, oh, my goodness, I feel so much gratitude. And all of a sudden, I found myself. Now, this would be more than some people could handle. But I found myself outside my car, up on a tall mountain with Jesus, shoulder to shoulder. I was sitting in my car. I mean, somebody gave me a $100,000 A7 supercharged Audi and just gave it to me. And, wow. uh, and it's, I gave my Suburban away to help some guy. And like an hour and a half later, God gives me a tenfold upgrade. And uh, I ended up giving that to my wife and then she upgraded again. But you know what happened was I was just sitting there and I'm like, you know, just so full of gratitude. It was like God showed me gratitude is a key that unlocks the door to break through. That when we're grateful, when we're thanking God for everything, that we're not worried about who didn't get or who did do or who said and who didn't say what they said or what we said or who said or she said or he said it's all you know you just get into this where jesus is the focus and everything else comes into alignment it's like a per perfect picture of the cross i got my crossfit shirt on so you know when we align this way it's because we first align this way we yes. connect with god here yes. and then it's like we're open open our arms are open like worship lord whatever you want however yeah. it's supposed to look I'm not going to try to drag you around like a dog on a leash. I'll do what you say. I'm not going to try to get you to bless my wayward plan. You know, I want to do your will. You know everything. You know what's best for me, God. Whatever you say, I say yes, whatever you say. And then all of a sudden he unlocks our ears. But um, I, he said, are you ready for this? And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, here we are on a high mountain uh, cliff overhanging the mountains. It, was, it wasn't far from where I'm at right now. And, uh, and, and, and I, I see Jesus really, really clear in the spirit. Like I'm not seeing him physically. I'm seeing him in the spirit, but very clear. Mm -hmm. And the tangible, thick, powerful kabod just mm -hmm. filled me and filled where, where I was standing. Mm -hmm. And Jesus grabs my hand, right? And he's like, are you ready for this? And I'm like, yes, Lord. I mean, I'm by myself. So I wasn't afraid about if people thought I was weird. So <laughs> he grabs my hand and he's like, he's like, He's like, okay. And then all of a sudden I hear the scripture and they shall mount up on wings as eagles and walk and not faint and run and not grow weary and feathers like eagle feathers literally started. I mean, in, in the spirit started to form in, in both of our arms. We, we mounted up on wings. We literally wow. became two giant eagles. Wow. And then we, we, and then, cause he said, are you ready for this? And I'm like, uh, okay. Cause I had no idea what I was about to experience, but it was so supernatural and so life-changing. And I mean, I've had many encounters. I could talk for probably years about all the heaven encounters, all that. He took me through hell. It was crazy. Um, I mean, I hated that he showed me it, but he said, I desire none perish, 
And he mm -hmm. wanted me to see the reality of hell so that I'd be motivated that today's the day of salvation. That's mm -hmm. why I do what I do. I want people to get saved, not mm -hmm. just saved by saying a prayer, but actually follow Jesus. So um, it was pretty amazing. We're flying over like Jerusalem. We flew mm -hmm. over the temple, the Dome on the Rock. We went north, looked like Syria. Mm -hmm. I saw a war broke out over there. And I was like, you know what? Um, there, I, well, I said, Lord, I said, there's a war. I saw shots and missiles and all that stuff flying back and forth. I said, what do we do? And I heard the Lord say, I want you to release my peace. And I just put my hand out like this. I'm flying and I'm just like, whoa. And I, I put my hand out and I said, I release the peace of Jesus over this war. And everybody put down their guns and put down their arms. And the, the war was settled. And I was just like, wow, it was like it was real. And I, and I, I didn't find out until I, I came out of the mountains that actually a war did break out over there and it quickly stopped just as quick as it got started. And I felt like God actually allowed me to be a part in settling a war dispute on the earth. And so I know he, he, you know, seats us in heavenly places. Yes. He said, all authority I give to you. So yes. we have this part to play in it. Uh, some people say, who do you think you are? And really that's coming out of insecurity from not knowing who they are. And yes. so, you know, I know who I am because God spoke to me about it. So I got over myself and now I can love people. And I don't really care if they like me or not because I know I'm fully loved. So they're not going to wreck my day if they don't like me. And if they say mean things, I just get that they're groaning because they don't know who they are. And all creation needs to know the creator and, and because he's the reason for the season. He's the reason we're alive. Like everyone's here because they've been literally given chance after chance to say yes to him. Yeah. And he gives us plenty of chances, you know, um, until, it, but we don't know the day or the hour. And he said, today is the day of salvation. So tomorrow is not guaranteed, but he took me through uh, heaven. I went shot up through a, a tunnel of stars up past the earth's atmosphere. And I, he went, I went up into heaven and I saw all the faces of the people. Um, and they were, they were running to welcome us entering heaven. And I entered heaven with Jesus still hand in hand, really wingtip to wingtip. And he releases me inside. I saw this giant pearl gate with a big giant gold knob and I went to touch it. And before I could touch it, it just swung open and the people were cheering and shouting and they were celebrating us mm -hmm. and i could hear people talking and saying that kind things uh and people who i you know hadn't seen in forever that had gone before in the great cloud of witnesses and i saw all these people shouting uh you know hosanna hosanna they're you're know, speaking words of 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 kindness and blessing. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. who was and is and is to come. You know, people are dancing and shouting and celebrating. It's like a big party. And mm -hmm. I saw that I could communicate with people without using words. Right. I just, you could speak thought, thought to thought, spirit yes. to spirit. Anyway, yeah. it was incredible. And he showed me the crystal sea and he took me through my house. It was huge. Oh my goodness. And there was food, a long table of food. And it was like every food that I've ever loved. And he, and he said to me, you can eat anything you want and it's all non-perishable. And I would grab yeah. something from it to taste because you don't need the food, but you do it for the enjoyment. Yeah. And I would take something to taste it and it would literally grow back. I watched it grow back and replenish itself. And the revelation was there's no shortage. There's no lack. There's no limit. There's spare parts in heaven. God can heal yes. you because yeah. we're seated there and we can release things, but it's all by faith. And the religious spirit wants people to think that that's not real. You know, the angels aren't real. Don't talk about what you can't see because we might turn off the tithers. No, no. Be a Holy Ghost filled person moving in heaven and don't worry about pastors that are trying to tone it down and they don't want the movement of the Holy Spirit. Find a church that does. This is the hour where God's not playing games. He's removing lampstands and he's returning and restoring the reverential fear of God that is yeah. the beginning of wisdom. We can't call it a Christian church if we're not following Christ, the king. <laughs> you can't follow Christ if you're not even teaching the infilling of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of fire and the Holy Spirit that's necessary to be like him. We got to get the chaff of religiosity burned off so that we're not lukewarm and we're not toning it down. God wants to come and destroy the works of the devil. And he wants to use every person to do this and to deliver life and life abundant. That's his goal. So praise God. Yes. Wow. Yay.
Woo! I always said, I know there's chocolate in heaven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not that that's Anything all I want in heaven, trust me, but you know. Yeah. Anything that you love, you're going to have. I mean, yeah. it's not, you, you can't rot teeth because you're a spirit being. <laughs> you're a spirit being. Right. Right. Yeah. I know what you're talking about because uh, in a dream one time, I was wanting to go to China, but it wasn't God's timing. This is years ago. And so I have a conversation with Jesus and neither one of our mouths are moving, but I know what he's saying and he knows what I'm saying because it was spirit to spirit and it was very convicting yeah. <laughs> what he said at the time. And so I, I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah, your mouth does not move. I mean, you're, you're spirit to spirit. You know what the yeah. other person's saying. And yeah, that's so cool. Uh, and I had another another time up on the hill. I was worshiping the Lord, and I saw Jesus appear, and he appeared in spirit. I saw him very clearly, though. I saw his eyes and the the shine and the look on his face. It was like it was almost like liquid water, but it was wow. kind of like silvery water. And so I saw him clearly in the spirit. I mean, it actually kind of freaked me out, to be honest. And I mean, I'm playing. I'm playing the, um, my guitar and I'm worshiping the Lord. And I had a, a chair with two seats, one of those camping chairs. I folded it out. And uh, and I haven't told very many people this because they think I was a lunatic, but it's just what happened. I mean, it's what happened. God is full of encounters. He's going to take you from glory to glory. If you're willing, he'll lead you along and teach you and show you things that you didn't even dream of. You know, yeah. so here I, I, I sit down on the right uh, on the left side of this two person seat camping chair. Again, I'm by myself. I'm, I'm or no, I started on, on the uh, let's see. I started on the left side. Then when Jesus appeared, I realized he wanted me to move over to the right side. Like he cared where I sat. And I moved from the left side, which is kind of like the driver's side. I moved to the passenger side. Wow. And then he anointed my head with oil. And I'm telling you, there was no wind. And he said, I bless you. And I'm looking at his eyes like the water. And I mean, I was undone. I see his hair and it's blowing and the wind's blowing. And I'm just like, Whoa! I mean, I started bawling. Actually, it was a honor with him. And I mean, all of a sudden, Jesus is sitting there. I had to move to the other spot so that he could sit in the driver's seat. And he was just showing me like, I need you to yield more and more. I need you to operate in full surrender so that I can fully surround you. Because people are trying to get an anointing, right? without being surrendered it doesn't work you got to be all in he said unless you lose your life you don't find it so we got to be all in i don't want it my way like brain yes so anyway jesus is just teaching us like full surrender brings a full surrounding you need the full surrounding and you need the full surrender yeah. uh you know in order to have an anointing that breaks the yoke which is the bondage to sin so we we don't have to focus on resisting the devil. We focused on pursuing God and we're automatically resisting the devil. And so many people are like, I got to try not to sin, try not to sin. Well, just know who you are. You were you know, saved by grace through, through faith because you believe that you're born again and you receive the gift of salvation by faith. You believe, right? But then you also have to recognize that, man, not only is the devil a liar, but he already lost. He already lost. So you don't have to fight like trying to win a battle. No, you you've won the battle now fight from victory and not for it yes yes amen and let god take you on a journey heaven encounters are so <laughs> real and so powerful and literally yeah. when he does these things man it changes it changes everything and so i don't know i could tell you so many stories but i just feel like well, god feel wants like, people to know have encounters yeah. let me take you on an adventure Come on. I feel like you're supposed to impart that over people listening right now that have never had a God encounter that okay. they will. And that's not why we serve God, but it comes along with, he just wants to bless us. Amen. Uh, uh, and yeah. so his goodness. So I want yeah. you to play an impartation over people watching right now. Yeah. So father, we just thank you right now. Those who are watching, you stretch a hand toward the screen. Just say, I receive heavenly encounters wow the winds are blowing right now they're <laughs> blowing 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 just like when i was with jesus on the mountain like i know that he lives in us as the hope of glory but you can feel the lord's spirit literally like the four winds of the spirit begin to blow and certain things are happening and wow. he even stirs people uh you know when you have a flame and at pentecost when it had fully come they were all together in one place and there was a sound from heaven and it was like a rushing wind a flood 
of, of winds just blew in. And uh, I remember being there in Israel in that same spot in the upper room where this had taken place. And, and man, I got so blasted by the Holy Spirit in that upper room. And it was so incredible. My friend was on the ground. He couldn't get up for the longest time. But just the Spirit of God put him down on the ground. He couldn't stand up because he, it was, there was too much glory. And uh, <laughs> I was standing in it, but I was fighting, trying not to fall down. <laughs> anyway, it was incredible. So, yeah, I release impartation, visitations, demonstrations, yes. activations. Yes. Uh, to be liberated by the Lord is an incredible thing. And so, you know, the religious spirit is the spirit that is against the movement of the Holy Spirit. The religious spirit wants to tone it down. You know, just, you know, you know, you have to understand these are new believers, but we have to be more seeker sense. You know, the Holy Spirit's not worried about where somebody's at. He wants to take them where they are and bring them deep into the water. And yet Jesus wants to deliver meat and not just milk. And so the meat of the word is available by hearing the voice of the Lord, because he's always speaking to those who are willing to listen from a heart that wants to respond. You got to go through some fire usually before you can get into a place of full surrender. But he said, Come he on. Around five things, surrender, selflessness, sacrifice, servanthood, and submission. You give me all of you. I'll give you all of me. If you just want a little weenie anointing, then Come just on. give him a little part of you on Sunday. Yeah. But yes. if you want all of it, you got to give up your whole life. You can't <laughs> find your life unless you're willing to lose it. And if you're not willing to lose it, you're going to lose it. So you got to give it up or you're not going to have it. And if you don't give it up, then you're going to hold on to it, in which case you lose. So yes. Jesus is basically saying, your life for mine. I paid for you, but I need you to respond to me so that I can use you in this coming revival. Um, I'm so excited, sister, for Awaken the Planet. I'm so excited about this event because we're this is our third annual Awaken the Planet. Mm. It's at Cheney Stadium. It's okay. at Cheney Stadium, that big giant stadium in North Tacoma. Wow. I love that place because it's like I feel the revival spirit in, in the city of Destiny in Tacoma where our church is. But yeah. there's a whole bunch of people coming. Pastors are coming. We'll have over 100 senior pastors from many streams many denominations from all over the nations Hallelujah. gathering together saying that we're one and you're not shutting our church we're one and we're lifting up the name of jesus Come the on. gates of hell will not prevail against the church that's on fire for god a church that doesn't allow the movement of the holy spirit and is more program driven than presence oh they're missing it and god's not having it he wants his church to be led by his spirit so the, yes. so the leadership has to be filled first with the spirit before they can be yielded to the spirit yes. when they get filled they get baptized by fire and they've surrendered god can then begin to surround and then you don't get all that religious you know activity and the judgmentalism and the hypocrisy and all that gr gross stuff that people don't like um but the church that he's building the gates of hell will not prevail against it and there's pastors that are discouraged it's because they've been doing it from their own thinking yes. and the bible says don't lean on your own understanding but acknowledge him in all your ways he'll make your path straight and you'll have a victory every week and god told me he said every single sunday should be pentecost it, it, we don't celebrate a one-time event like pentecost was over two thousand years ago and the spirit yes. fell and the fire came tongues of fire everybody had a flame nobody was like oh i like your flame better i wish my <laughs> flame was bigger how come you got a blue flame and i got an orange flame and the comparison thing and the blame game you know all of that none of that was even neat necessary because everybody realized god just showed up and everybody matters and everybody's powerful and everybody's love so good you yeah. know, we just need to be baptized in the love of God with that fire. <laughs> yeah, That's the fire of God, because the really, love of the Father. Yeah, when that love comes on you, you don't care about all that stuff anymore. You just I know. Love. You just I know. love everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So intimacy, intimacy is the key. Not being intimidated from sin what? consciousness, yes. but being intimate with God. Miracles without intimacy is witchcraft. Come on. God wants people. God wants people intimate and we yeah. have to come to him as we are when, when he told me to book the tacoma dome uh like three years ago he said nathan i want you to book the tacoma dome uh and i said well why and he said uh because uh i want to do something powerful in the northwest i want to bring revival unto awakening and i said well what would you want to what would you want to uh, do and he said i want to awaken the planet 
And mm-hmm. I said, well, okay, well, what do you want to call it? And he said, I just told you. <laughs> so he told me what he wants to do. He told right. me to book the, the, the venue. And then I asked him, well, what do you want to do? And he said, I just told you. And I laughed. And then I told my wife and she's like, well, honey, that's very expensive. And it was, it was, it was like, I think it was 70,000 plus for, you know, just for the, the, just for the evening or whatever it was. We did like three hours and then did a break and evangelize the city. And then we did another three hours. So yeah, it was like, yeah, it was like a lot of dough. And I said, Lord, I don't want to do that. It's expensive. And the Lord said, I'll pay for it. So then we were doing, we were selling the, the, uh, ticket master tickets for entrance. And, uh, I don't know. We sold thousands of those tickets and, and it was like 12 bucks a piece or something. I don't remember. Um, yeah, it was like 12 bucks a piece anyway. And one day the Lord said to me, I want you to refund everybody who bought a ticket. And I'm like, what? I said, Lord, we need the money to do the event. And he goes, no, I want you to refund everybody who bought a ticket. And I'm just like, uh, okay. I told my wife and our team, you know, we have a small team and I just said, honey, God said to refund everybody. And she's like, well, how are we going to pay for it? I said, well, he said he would take care of it and I trust it. And and so let's believe God. And she's like, okay, so we push the refund button. Like everybody gets their money back after, I mean, we're only a few weeks from the menu. It's going to be like, you know, right. We're almost there. And then, uh, and then somebody calls me and is like, Hey, I know I felt like God told me to give you a gift. And we opened this envelope, unexpected $50,000, Wow! which was like way, way more than the ticket sales, like Great probably stuff. double. I forgot what it was, but it was, it was like a lot more. And so anyway, my, my point is um, when God gives you something to do that scares you, if you've heard God, yes. don't be afraid yes. it, that you don't have what it takes. Don't be worried about what you have. Because the Lord always would say in the Bible, what do you have? It's not, we don't tell God why we can't do what he's asked. (laughs) We assume that if he's asked us, then he's already decided to provide. Right. So I step out so many times when God tells me, he says, get get on on the road right now. I need you to preach in Canada. I'm like, but Lord, I don't have a speaking engagement. He goes, you need to leave tomorrow morning and have somebody else preach at the rock. So I, I have somebody else preach at the rock. I'm driving North. And by the time I get to Seattle from Tacoma, I get a phone call from a pastor in, in, uh, in, in Canada. And, and, and he asked me what I'm doing. And I say, I'm going up into Canada. Well, you have a speaking engagement. I said, no, he goes, well, why are you going up into Canada? I said, because God told me you need to leave in the morning. And then next thing you know, he goes, well, I just talked to my brother. He's a pastor at the church of God prophecy. And, uh, that's a, a denomination across Canada. And he's like, and, and I, he just told me that, you know, he was uh, feeling like God wanted to do a new thing. Let me just call him. He called him. Next thing you know, I get a buzz on my Facebook that says guest speaker, Nathan French, revivalist from, you know, the Seattle area is going to be with us this Sunday. Well, I hadn't even agreed to be the speaker, but my friend told him about me. And that pastor said, God told me not to prepare a message for Sunday. Uh, he's going to do a new thing. And, mm. and so I was open to whatever that was going to look like. And when you told me about Nathan French, I felt a spark in my spirit that I was to invite him to come to do a revival service. So here I'm, I'm not even out of Seattle yet. And I got a speaking engagement. And I didn't call anybody. I just moved in faith. I believe if I didn't start driving, I would have not had that opportunity. But right. because I did what wow. God said and I started to move into faith. Then when I got there, they were open arms and other pastors in the area heard about what happened and they started opening up big doors for me across Canada because of it. And so I just, that's a word for some of you, like stop worrying about how it's going to look or what you're going to receive or what you have or don't have. Start stepping out and obeying the Lord and watch how he shows up in your life. I mean, we're doing Cheney Stadium. This, this event is going to be historic. Sean Foyt's coming. From Let Us Worship, Chris Overstreet out of Bethel, Compassion to Action, uh, uh, generals uh, like Cindy Jacobs uh, coming to prophesy. I just talked to my uh, friend, Dr. Billings. I'm, I'm thinking about what, what I could have her do. A powerful prophetess out of, uh, uh, out of Georgia, you know, and we're going to have her. Maybe she'll do the pre-rally. We'll see. But I mean, God's bringing this thing together. Yeah. Jake Hamilton's coming. Jake nice. Hamilton. I mean, this that stadium's going to be packed. It's like nice. 12,000 seats. And when, when the enemy tried to shut down the church with COVID and all the other nonsense, yeah. trying to muzzle the ox while they're treading out the grain, 
you know, trying to shut down, you know, the, all of that was a bogus agenda from the pit of hell. It wasn't yeah. about a virus. Come on. We've been healed by his stripes since the beginning. Come There's on. nothing going around in the kingdom. If you know the word of God, then you know every sickness, every disease has already been paid for by the blood. Yes. And we've been healed already. And believing that is what keeps us so. And that's why we see so many miracles. I mean, it's just because yes. it's normal to see miracles. Thank you, Jesus. And so anyway, yes. yeah, yeah. praise God. That is August 14, go to awaken, awakentheplanet.com if you want info about the event. It's August 14. It's going to be during the days. So that's Saturday. Uh, we're all going to come together. We're doing a massive baptism because a lot of leaders are not baptizing anymore. Wow. And we want those lost, those people who get saved to go fill up into those local churches. And all those pastors are going to be the ones receiving the increase of the harvest. Well, all the new converts are going to be invited by those pastors themselves to come into their churches. And we're excited about that. We give them permission to invite as many people as they want to come and join them in their churches you're willing to come and i mean if you want to promote your thing you can come i mean we have we know people will come and bring you know shirts and whatever of their own ministry and what they represent that's totally yeah. fine i mean we want well, this is about unity in the body of christ and my new book cheryl's coming out it just finished it's called one and it's all about jesus it's my third book uh, thank you by the way i know some of my monthly partners follow your your show and and so if you're one of my monthly partners, thank you, thank you, thank you. You make it possible for me to go into the nations with the simple gospel. And many, many people continue to get saved, healed, and delivered because of your generosity. I never have to have a love offering to go places. I mean, people bless me. I'm excited. I'm going to Nashville, and I'm going to be preaching for 850 to 1,000 young people with yeah. Johnny Enlow. So Johnny oh. Enlow, I love Johnny. Yeah. And uh, so Johnny, I, I'm having him do the, the Friday night. Him and I will tag team on the Friday night, and then I'll, do, I'll speak on the big Saturday event as well. But, man, I'm so excited about what God's doing on the earth. I mean, he's pouring his spirit out. Yes. And the church that he builds, the gates of hell will not prevail against. Come on. People just need Jesus. So I love, I love what he's doing right now. I'm so excited about what I'm seeing. And uh, even the turbulence is a good sign that resistance should motivate us. It should get us fired up. What's the devil so worried about? He's worried because he's lost. There we go. Anyway, yeah. that's that's enough about yeah. that. But yeah, I'm excited though, Cheryl. I'm, I'm just feeling the glory. I'm, I mean, the winds are blowing. I'm on the yeah. mountain. My dad's yeah. with me. We're we're deep in it. You want to yeah. see the jeep? Look at there's the jeep over there. Nice. See it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So my dad's out. My dad's my dad's sitting in the car. He's probably getting a little nap. He's he, I think he's a little annoyed that I'm not, um, oh. you know, talking with him. So bless his heart. I'll wrap up here in a bit. But you know. I love you. You guys are doing a good job. Jesus is on the throne. He's not surprised by anything. He said all things work together for good, according yes. to his plan to make us more like him. Yes. Um, but if you, if you haven't had a chance to pick up one of my books on hearing God, go check it out at the, at the website. It's just my okay. ministry is Nathan French Ministries dot com nathan french ministries dot com Perfect. and uh, you can check out the book for, uh, it's not meant to be a secret is a powerful book that identifies every ear blocker and what activates mm -hmm. the ears to hear wow. uh, so that's called it's not meant to be a secret okay. um, and then the second book rushing the floodgates of heaven is a continuation um, but my motivation in writing books isn't to show people how smart i am because I don't consider myself to really be much of a writer, but God spoke to me. And I'm telling you that those books are masterpieces this is what people say. They, mm -hmm. they read books all the time. People who are really avid readers are like, I can't believe the spirit of excellence and the quality and the um, it just I'm, it's supernatural. There's just no way I'm that smart. Those books are very anointed, <laughs> very powerful. And if you haven't read them, you need to get them like for real if you want to hear God better. Uh, yeah. And people tell me all the time, I couldn't hear the Lord for so long. And then I read your first book and it identified every ear blocker wow. and every activator. And when I got the ear blockers out of the way and the activators I brought in, I could hear him crystal clear. And Where so it really is life changing. So that's the reason I write books. And uh, the third book I'm, I'm launching, it's not even like out yet, but I'm going to have it in my hand in one week and I'm going to have it for the first time. I'll present it at our Awaken the Planet pre-rally. Uh, and so the info is at awakentheplanet.com. 
And you should go register while it's free because it is free right now. Right. And who does a stadium event and has it be free? Right. I mean, that's, that's because God wants it free. He wants the lost saved. Hallelujah. So good. Well, we have about um, not quite 15 minutes left. Do you want to see if the Lord gives you anything, um, any yeah. words of knowledge or prophecy? Well, I see, that, I see a lady right now that has uh, neck pain. And I don't know if that's because you've been watching TV in, in your bed at night, but just put your hand back there. If you have neck pain, just put your hand back there and just say, Jesus, thank you right now for healing me. I receive my miracle and I just command your neck to be healed right now. And mm -hmm. some people are burdened by false responsibility because the enemy's job is to sift you like wheat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wants to remind you of what you haven't done right or what you didn't do yet. Mm -hmm. And the Lord wants you to enter the rest so you can experience his joy which releases his strength. So I just release the joy. Uh, I release the joy of the Lord over you. And I, all the yokes and burdens come off the shoulders right now. And, and if you're watching this, just say, Lord, I give you every weight and I give you every burden. Mm -hmm. And I cast my cares on you now because you care for me. Yes. I surrender my whole life and I declare that I'm all in for you. I hold nothing back. I give you my whole heart. Have your way in my life. I trust you with my family. I trust you with my finances. Yes. And I ask you to truly be the Lord of all. Hallelujah. Help me to think correctly and help me to hear your voice increasingly as I walk by faith and not by sight. Mm. I see the Lord just taking people by the hand and leading them into his ways, his truth, his you know, when you start thinking more like the kingdom, you start worrying a lot less. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Stay in the peace of the moment wow. because it's yeah. the gift of the present. Yeah. And don't strive for anything. Just focus on him and he'll give you eyes to see what he wants to do in the moment. Mm -hmm. And from a place of encounter and strength, you'll actually have the joy of the Lord that will actually set you free from fears and condemnation and feeling like you don't measure up. You are accepted in the beloved. You've been pre-selected and yeah. you don't have to apply for a job you already have. So just be free. <laughs> Let God love on you. <laughs> he loves you. He loves you. He loves That's you. So and you good. can't mess up the love of God. It's unconditional. <laughs> And uh, if you're watching this and you're like, what are they talking about? Maybe you don't even know Jesus. Just know Jesus died on the cross, not to condemn the world, but to save it. He came to save you. And right? some of us don't know we need saving. The rescuer is only valued when we know we need rescuing. If people aren't drowning, sometimes they're not going to reach out for that life preserver. God wants us to recognize our need for him. And so if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus as your Lord, as your savior, as your friend, or maybe you know about him and you don't even know that you don't know him. And if you don't hear his voice, I would question whether or not you know him. Um, we can hear God through the Bible. We can hear God through someone else like this. We can hear God through circumstances often speak very loud. Like if you don't like what you're seeing, it's probably you just need to change what you're doing. Right. And if you want to change what you're doing, then you might have to first start changing what you're thinking. Because as a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, we become like what we think we are. So we got to know what he says about who we are. Yes. And then what happens is we, we start thinking right. The Bible actually renews the mind. When you read the scripture, it yes. renews the mind. When yes. the mind is renewed, you begin to yield to God. When you begin to yield God because you get understanding and you get wisdom. And as you're listening for him. And you're interacting with the living word. Jesus is not a dead letter. We, we read the Bible, but he's the God of the Bible. And he's alive. He's not dead. And it's important to know that because sometimes we're like reading the Bible and can kind of feel dry in the Old Testament. It's a lot of laws, a lot of rules. And then Jesus comes to settle and satisfy every requirement of the law because he knew we couldn't do it. And then he did it and then gave it to us so we can never boast we did anything. And then he says, now you're free to go be who I say you are. But if you don't know what he says, you'll try to prove it. And that's what happened in the garden. Did he really say was he was trying to get him to say, you know, oh, well, maybe he didn't say to doubt. And we got to shut doubt out. Right. Yes. Because sin entered the world because they doubted that God told him don't eat of that tree. Right. So we got to know God says, don't do it for your own good, not because he wants to penalize you. And then you can have fun pursuing the Lord, enjoying what he's saying. 
uh, you know, and so I love to read the scripture, but my favorite thing is to just connect with God. I just want to talk to him because he's always speaking. Uh, and I feel like he's saying right now that somebody came down with cancer and they don't even want to tell anybody. And the Lord says that I, cancer, uh, cancer is canceled. Come on. Canc- yeah. The real cancel culture is cancer is canceled. COVID's canceled. Everything that came against you is canceled in Jesus name. And I'm telling you the truth. God spoke to me a few weeks ago and he told me to tell people that COVID's canceled. Come on. It won't be COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-21. None of those strands are going to be able to make it through the blood that makes you clean. You have been sanctified and washed in the blood of Jesus. There's no sickness, no disease is coming nigh your dwelling place. He's hiding you in the shelter of the shadow of the Almighty. No disease, no sickness. Death, hell, and the grave already been depleted and defeated. God said it is finished on that cross. He paid for it. We redeem, we, we receive what he redeemed by saying yes to that. So it's like, I say yes. Jesus, thank you right now. You're healing somebody's feet. I see somebody's feet are on fire. Thank you. I command those feet be healed. Neuropathy, you are canceled. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. Restricted airflow is a demon. I rebuke it. Get out right now. Shortness of breath. Come out of that woman. In Jesus' name, I just prayed for somebody with oxygen. They took off their tank in in our church at the Rock Rock Revival uh, this last Sunday. You know, we had so many miracles took place. People are flying in from other places in the world because of the way God is moving. They're coming in. They're being healed. We've seen many come out of wheelchairs. It's normal for people to get restored in the glory. And so we just need to let Jesus have his church back. we got to let Jesus have his church back. Come on, the chief cornerstone. (laughs) Give him back his church, Pastor. Give him back his church. It's it's his party. <laughs> it's my party, and I cry if I want to. It's like you know, the only reason we'd be weeping and in sorrow is if we're doing it our way. We got to submit to God, surrender yeah. to God, let Him surround yeah. it, and be blessed. Amen. People are experiencing uh, manifestations right now. Um, oh, shakaraba. Yeah. Ken said that he's got fi- hands of fire right now, and Bonita Ooh. said that her son, well, she first she had um, in her legs, she could feel the tingling. Her knees were tingling yes. as you were talking, yeah. and then yes. she said that um, her seven-year-old son broke out in prayer and started saying, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Things are Ooh. happening. A lot of people are experiencing. And now she yes. says her knees are on fire. So praise God. And people are receiving. Ooh, healed in Jesus name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank by you, Lord. Way, by the hallelujah. way, sis, by the way, sister, uh, there's a residual impact of, of what God is pouring out right now on the listeners. Because yeah. when he is given place to speak through a person who recognizes that the word says that we're instruments of righteousness, when mm-hmm. we're willing to not pre-rehearse everything and to let God speak, I can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. I don't even know. And that's what Bonke taught us in the school of evangelism. Mm-hmm. When Reinhard Bonke, the greatest evangelist ever known on the planet, yeah. he took us under his wing there for like five days intense training on, on, on learning how to flow with the Holy Spirit. And he taught us that, you know, when he gets up in front of those big crowds to do million person crusades, which I'm so excited to do myself, I'm just like, oh my goodness, what do you want to do? And the Lord says, I want to do this now. And I'm just like, okay, I never plan what I'm going to say because I totally trust God and you can do it too. You can do it too. You don't have to have some regurgitated speech that somebody brought an eloquent speech from 20 years ago you thought was profound there there it is we're back anyway we don't have to speak something that got spoken so many times before somebody said something we liked it we used it no ask god to speak through you he said don't worry about what you will say for the spirit will speak through you bonky used to say i can't wait to hear what i am about to say (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's Amen. true faith that's true faith because i have to admit i have to have my notes but um you know i holy spirit yeah. still says things that aren't on the paper but <laughs> you know yeah yeah it, and that's okay you you prepare in in your way and some people are just different but i yeah. mean i i sometimes will ask him what do you want to do today yeah. and he'll give me a theme 
and I'll start soaking on every scripture around that thought process. Yes, that theme. There you go. And then, but when I get there in front of a crowd, I don't want to have to try to figure out what I'm going to do. And yeah. it stresses me out to try to follow every jot and tittle. I want to be free to flow however God wants to flow. And that's, that's why some of you are being healed right now. It's because Jesus heals. Jesus saves. That's why some of you are saying, yes, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior in the sincerity of your heart not the method of your prayer is what's causing salvation right now. And some of you are like, well, I don't know if I could be delivered of this spirit of rejection, but even when I'm around people, I feel rejected. Well, the Lord says you, you can't be rejected. It's a lie. You've been accepted in the beloved. So the Come spirit on. of rejection, I bind you. I rebuke yes. you. Come off that young man. Hey, yes. <laughs> so you are not rejected. You're accepted in the beloved. Amen. Come on. Uh, and also there's somebody else that's been struggling with doubt about a job and they're afraid to leave the one they got, but they don't like the one they got. And I feel like God's saying, listen, there's so many jobs right now. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to the fake news. Start listening to what God's saying. The good news is that the gospel is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus is like, got lots of jobs. So he Come wants on. to upgrade you. Uh, so Come don't on. think that he's going to downgrade and don't think you're going to lose if you have to step away from the abusive nature of that of that employer, you just say, no way. I'm not playing games anymore with this. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to step yeah. out on a limb and believe it won't break. God's going to upgrade okay. you. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, God. Woo. Yeah. Wow. All Somebody right. needs well, money right now to pay their rent. Somebody needs on. money to pay their rent. I hear the Lord saying, I'm paying the bill. I just need you to trust me. And if you're having trouble trusting me, look back at all the times I've provided and have been faithful. You do your job in being faithful and I will do mine, says the yes. Lord. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yeah. Out of time. I hate to be out of time. This has been so good. But God bless you, Nathan, oh, you, so sister. much for taking time out to be with us today. And I just bless your ministry and I look forward to Awaken the Planet and all that God's going to do in that mighty Amen. move of God. Hallelujah. So Amen. God bless Amen. you. And Love friends, you. Stay tuned until the next God encounters. Hallelujah. Be blessed, everyone. <laughs>